Hey, Grade 11s. Today, we are going to look at the first question, which is the hockey puck analysis. So in this type of question, we are going to draw a free body diagram and then calculate the net force from that free body diagram. Thereafter, calculating acceleration and then anything relating to kinematic equations. Um, so we're going to be basically working in a forward manner. So here is our question. A 0.17 kilogram hockey puck slides along the ice at 19 meters per second east. Sorry, just give me one second. And it hits a rough patch of ice that is 5.1 meters across. Assume the coefficient of kinetic friction between the puck and the rough ice is 0 0.47. So we know over here that this is kinetic friction. So that means that the object must be moving in this case scenario. So the first part is we are going to be drawing a free body diagram of the puck moving on the rough ice. So we can do that. So we will start with drawing our free body diagram. We have gravity acting downwards. And since it is sitting on smooth ice, it is sitting on a surface, there is going to be a normal force. And the puck is moving. Its motion is going in this direction. So that is the motion. So kinetic friction or friction always has to oppose the motion so our kinetic friction is going to be in the opposite direction so now we can label all of these over here so we have gravitational force we have normal force acting upwards and because this is the motion of the object it is going towards east then this means that our kinetic friction has to oppose that motion and it has to be in the opposite direction now, I would suggest drawing for these type of questions, drawing some sort of diagram so that it can give you an idea of what is happening. So in this case scenario, we have the object moving along some sort of smooth ice. So we can draw that over here. Sorry, just give me one second. Smooth ice. So we have our puck moving along smooth ice. And what happens at some point in that motion, it hits a rough patch. So it's going to hit a rough patch. So this is going to be a rough patch. And our rough patch is 5.1 meters across. So from here to here, it is 5.1 meters. That is our displacement that this object undergoes. And then thereafter, it can continue down its path. It's smooth ice right after that. We also know that it's sliding along at 19 meters per second when it hits that rough patch. So right here at this motion in time, we can say our initial velocity is 19 meters per second. When it hits that rough patch, it's going to decelerate. It's going to slow down. So what's going to happen is later on in the question, we are going to need to figure out what is the final velocity over here when it gets back onto smooth ice. Now, for part two, calculate the kinetic friction. So we are looking for kinetic friction. So in order to calculate kinetic friction, it is going to be equal to mu k times normal force. Now, we know that normal force is equal to mass times gravity. And now we can plug in our values. So we have mu k. So coefficient of kinetic friction is 0 0.47. Our mass we have from above, which is, I forgot to highlight, 0 0.17 kilograms. And gravity is equal to 9.8. Multiplying all of these, we get our kinetic friction is equal to 0 0.78 newtons. And the direction of the kinetic friction, don't forget, from our free body diagram, we have the direction is equal to west. So if we're drawing our compass diagram, it is now going in the west direction over here. Now, the next part is determining the puck's average acceleration. So in order to find our acceleration, we need to look at our net force in our x direction. 
Now, the reason why we lock our X direction is because in our Y direction, gravity and normal force are opposing each other. They can basically cancel each other out. So the motion of the object is not moving in our Y direction. It is moving in our X direction. So therefore, we have to look at any forces in our X direction. And therefore, the force in our X direction is kinetic force over here or kinetic friction. So F net equals MA, Newton's second law. And the only force or the only force for our net force is kinetic friction that we have over here. So FK is the only force that is being applied on the hockey puck multiplied by mass times acceleration. Now, in order to find acceleration, we are going to divide by mass on the opposite side. And now you can plug in your numbers. So acceleration is equal to our FK, which we have, so 0 0.78, divided by our mass, which we also know, which is 0 0.17. So our acceleration is equal to 4.6 meters per second squared. Now, since acceleration is a vector quantity, that means it has a direction. The direction is going to be in the same direction as the forces or the motion, uh, or the sorry, the the main forces that are there and the only force acting on the hockey puck is kinetic friction which is in the west direction so the acceleration is also going to be west you can always rearrange this equation so that you can have it to be negative and if you change it to negative that means this is going to be no longer west it is now going to be east and this basically means that the object is decelerating and it's slowing down and we can figure that out because it's going on a rough patch when it's going on that rough patch obviously the hockey puck is going to start slowing down now the last part is calculating the puck's velocity as it leaves the rough ice and returns to smooth ice so going back over here we are trying to figure out what the final velocity is at the end of the rough patch so going back Our initial velocity we have as 19 meters per second east. Our displacement that it undergoes in a rough patch is 5.1 meters. Our acceleration is 4.6 meters per second square west. Now, since the object's motion is going in the east direction, we would like to change everything so that it is also in the east direction. So this west, we are going to change to east. So now it becomes negative 4.6 meters per second square east. And we are trying to figure out what the final velocity is. So going from here, final velocity from our kinematic equations, final velocity square equals to initial velocity square plus 2a times displacement. Now you can plug in your numbers. So initial velocity is equal to 19 square plus 2 times negative 4.6 multiplied by 5.1. And you can square root all of this. So just give me one second. I have to calculate this out. 19 square plus 2 times negative 4.6 times 5.1. 314.08 square root of all of that is equal to 17.7. And since we have two significant digits, our final answer is going to equal to 18 meters per second. Meters per second in our east direction since the motion is also in our east direction.